22 of uh, my journey to Ironman California. Now, I live in California, and uh, this year, all this stuff that's been falling from the sky hasn't stopped. We're not used to all this rain. But anyways, I love this rain. And uh, one of the my most favorite things, I always mention in every video, and I'll keep on mentioning until the rain stops, because uh, it'll be stopping soon, hopefully. I love swimming in the rain. Oh, I love it. It's cold, but I absolutely love it. So I uh, just wanted to start off the week by sharing my love for the rain and, and swimming. Ah, all right. A few minutes later. All right, well, as fast as my excitement started, my excitement is over. <laughs> I guess I found out today that uh, they do close when it rains, which is totally fine. I always wondered, like, what's the rule? Like, when do they close the water, right? I always just kind of wondered. But I guess now I know where if the wind is too windy and you can't see the bottom of the water or if it's affecting the waves of the water, then they close it. So I guess all the other times that I've been in the rain, it wasn't that rainy or windy, but I guess today is. Maybe you can see some of it. Yeah, it's not too much. But hey, I don't make the rules. All right, welcome back to week 22, my journey to Iron Man California 2023. All right, so quick little story. I have a story. It's non Iron Man related, but I figured it's about me and I <laughs> and this whole thing is about me. So I figured let me express my story. So I've been playing sports my whole life. And for example, I played racquetball for a long time and playing with a variety of different age groups of men and women, you get to see some interesting apparel and interesting uh, tools or equipment. You know, like the, the older guys, uh, you know, they'd come in and they would have like very archaic equipment. And you're like, you know, you're in my head, I'm thinking, why, why such old equipment? I don't, I don't understand. Just get new, new, <laughs> get new ones, you know, but then you would ask like, oh, you know, you play racquetball and like, oh, I've been playing racquetball for the last 20 years. Okay. That's why they have old equipment because either they haven't played in a very long time and they, you know, have some equipment that they, uh, that they have. I don't know. But the point is I would always wonder why such old equipment. Anyway, story aside. So yesterday I hired Kylie's brother. Now, Kylie is the female wrestler who won state a couple of weeks back and her brother was the coach and her mom was the coach for that season. So I had such a good time training her. I had such a good time following along. You know, we're still training together, but I had such a good time watching and being a fan of wrestling that I wanted to learn more wrestling. So I hired her brother and we had our first session on uh, on Saturday yesterday so i was really excited i was all pumped up and i was like, hey you know i have some wrestling shoes that i you know i had purchased when i did wrestling when i first started my jujitsu career my first pair of wrestling shoes and only pair when i bought them at the beginning of my jujitsu career i've been doing jujitsu for 15 years so i was ready to work out you know his name is royal royal uh you know we were getting ready and as soon as i pulled out my wrestling shoes it hit me i'm that guy now I'm, the, I'm that that guy with old archaic tools playing with it. You know, I'm like, it just hit me. As soon as I pulled them, I didn't, when I put them in the bag, didn't think anything of it. But for whatever reason, when I pulled them out, they just looked old. They're not old. I mean, they're old, but not old because, you know, I've used them several times. So they, a little bit of scuff marks, but they're 15 years old. You know, I kept them this whole time saying, oh, I'm going to wrestle one day. I'm going to wrestle one day. And which I did, but I kept these shoes for 15 years. And, you know, Royal looked at me, kind of laughed at me. And he goes, man, those are some old, <laughs> old shoes. And he goes, those shoes are now for sale as a throwback. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> People are buying my shoes as a throwback when I bought it in the original back. Oh, man. So I felt uh, very archaic yesterday. So I need to, uh, you know, take my own advice and buy my own and new. Sorry, not my own, but I need to buy new equipment. So that was uh, my day yesterday. Update, let's see, everything's going well. My body's feeling really, really good. Uh, I have not done double days. Uh, every single day I've been doing something, but I haven't done any double days yet. I don't feel like it's uh, that I need to push myself too much for double days at the moment. Uh, single days right now, we're just I'm just working on technique. So I think I'm, I'm very happy. So I'm not pushing myself. We got another four weeks till uh, the marathon. So my body feels good. The only thing that's, uh, kind of an issue is that my knee on my right side swelled up after the marathon and it's still slightly swollen. I don't have the full range of motion yet. 
So that's the only concern that I have. So when I did the uh, world's toughest mutter, I had a client who uh, was a radiologist and she would, you know, do MRIs on me and look at my knee. And, you know, at that time, my knee would swell after uh, long runs or very intense activity. So she would do an MRI and she would look at it and she would tell me that the knee structure is strong. There's nothing wrong with the, stru the structure of the knee. There's no torn ligaments. There's no torn meniscuses meniscuses torn meniscus so you know she just said 10 years ago she goes you know if you're running the race and your knee swells you're okay to push it because there's nothing wrong with the knee structurally now it's going to swell but swelling is swelling and at that time she was extracting you know the fluid from my knees via a syringe which i wish i had a, a syringe now to pull out the uh, the swelling but 10 years later my knee still swells although the structure of the knee still feels good the knee for whatever reason swells so i just when it swells it usually takes about two weeks and then it goes away i just work on my range of motion i do a lot of my recovery work but i've been doing a lot of recovery work and it's still been swollen so it's just a, a slight concern um, not a big deal but it is a concern but i wanted to update you guys on my little story and update you on my knee and uh, we'll go from there all right all right so a little update i just got back from swimming and i decided to film my swimming i haven't done it in a long time so i decided to film different angles unfortunately i was by myself today so i have to tripod the video versus having lissy uh, taking it for me so the the angles won't be that good but hopefully they come up and i also wanted to do a video of the fins that i use and also the snorkel that i use the snorkel and the fins are really to work on the entry point and the well the recovery and the catch and the pull of the um, of the stroke so if you use the paddles incorrectly then you're gonna feel the water hit the uh, paddles or the fins and you're gonna break your movement so by going into the water a specific way for the fins it kind of builds that muscle memory so that when i don't use the fins i'm entering the water as if i'm using the fins all right so the first video is with me swimming using the fins so again the fins are to reinforce the proper entry point into the water and also the actual stroke itself but mainly the entry point now i'll show you a couple of videos of me swimming with the fins and then i will show another video of what i should be doing that i'm still or that i still haven't corrected and actually when i was researching for uh, a swimming coach lissy's dad is actually the one who recommended total immersion swimming because he is a swimmer using total immersion and he's the one who noticed that uh, my stroke was off and my stroke, meaning if you look at my arms, my arms are fully extended, see that? That's a lot of work for the shoulder. So what I need to do is I need to uh, bend the elbow and the next video should be. If you think of that middle finger as a pointer and as that hand cuts through the surface of the water, the trajectory is shallow and it's straight ahead. And you wanna make sure that that hand is in neutral. So if you notice the elbow is bent where mine is straight and that's what I have uh, a lot of work to do, so. Here's me with the snorkel, where I'm just working on the stroke. Pretty uh, amazing tool. I wish I would have started earlier when my coach recommended the first time. <laughs> but that's my bad, my bad. I didn't use the uh, fins this time. I really love the fins too. It really enforces the, you know, the, the kicking of the legs. I didn't do it this time. The gym was closing and I had to hurry up on the video. Here's the next video of me swimming without the fins. So this is just total body. Now again, I'm still having the issues of the elbows, so that's when I go to the pool today, that's actually what I'll work on. But I will say that the last time I sent a video to my coach, he, remember, he's the one who found that I was crossing over. So every time that I would take a breath right there, I would cross over with my arm. So I've noticed that I've maintained or I fixed that, uh, that problem that I once had. And I think you can see it best there and also in the slow motion, which should be coming up uh, within the next video or so. So the front arm does not cross over the midpoint when I take a breath. Here it is. So if you look at my left arm inserting or going into the water, boom. Now, as I take my breath, last time my left arm was crossing the midline. So if you notice here, 
I'm swimming, I'm taking the breath, and my arm stays exactly where it needs to be. So that is the, one of the things that my coach found last time that I've been working a lot on, and it seems to me that I have fixed it. So now on to the elbows. Bent elbows, not extended. And I also used uh, the snorkel. <clears throat> now when I use the snorkel, I'm only using the snorkel to work on my arms and my stroke. That is all I'm working on, I'm not working on the breathing. I don't want any interruptions of the stroke. Again, building that muscle memory and that technique. In order for me to trust my equipment, I really need to, I guess, put it through a stress test, if you want to call it that. You know, when I was riding the mountain bike several weeks ago with uh, with my friend Andrew, it'd been a long time since I've ridden my bike and I didn't feel like I trusted it. And this new bike, I've never, you know, obviously it's new, so I don't have any trust in the bike. So I had to like really test it. So I, as you can see, I'm going to go up a hill and it's not a really steep hill, but it's a hill in the neighborhood. And I just go up and I decided to go down and just really feel the bike, the performance of the bike. You know, just me and the bike going downhill, just trust. All right. So I'm out on a bike ride for today and uh, got this big old hill. So you know what they say, what goes up must come down. I'm going to record myself bombing down the hill. I still haven't gotten used to my my bike and its performance so this is the best way for me to get a feel and to trust my bike is to uh bomb downhill for me so see you in a couple seconds at the top so now that i did that i really 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 feel good on the bike because i guess now the bike and i have become one so i needed that let's see outside of that Everything's going good. All right, well, a little uh, knee update. My knee has been swollen since the uh, since the race. It's not severely swollen. A couple of video videos ago, I showed my range of motion. I have definitely increased the range of motion since then, but it's just that last, you know, several inches that, you know, kind of closed my leg. That range of motion hasn't come back yet. So there's still swelling in the knee. It doesn't stop me or prevent me from doing any of my exercises or movements. It's just, I just can't bend it all the way. So that's that's uh, that's unfortunate, but little by little, just keep on recovering. Outside of that, I can't think of anything else. I don't know, week 23 coming up.